14 trends in group 2 as we go down the group maybe the ionization energy will be easier because you can remember that as the atom gets larger it's easier to remove the outer electrons compared to a smaller atom so the ionization energy decreases that will narrow down the options if you can't remember the trend you can also refer to the data booklet for some numbers composition decomposition of carbonates temperature as you go down the group it is harder to decompose the carbonates so harder the temperature to decompose the carbonates will be increasing Fifteen is a typical question that keeps coming out year after year. Decomposition of group two nitrates. So they say that we have two grams decomposed and one point three two grams of gas produced. We form an equation. What is more interesting to us will be the amount of solid left over. So we take the two grams, subtract by the gas, one point three two, you get zero point six eight grams of group two oxide. Once we have these numbers, the mass of the oxides and the nitrates, we will convert them to the moles. 2 divided by mR of nitrates, 0.68 divided by mR of your oxides. And then the important thing is they are the same ratio, so they will be the same number of moles. Once we have this equation, you can solve for your x. That will give us the mR of your unknown metal. In this case, it's calcium because mR calculator is 40. Sixteen, X, Y and Z, if they were nitrogen, sulfur or carbon, nitrogen will become nitrogen oxides, dioxide, carbon will become carbon monoxide, um, not really oxidized in atmosphere but with more burning we will get carbon dioxide. Sulfur dioxide, you will need a catalyst to convert it to sulfur trioxide. So these two are not really natural processes in the atmosphere. What, which student could be correct? Student Q might be easier to check. Oxidation number of X increases from 1 by 1, from Y to Z. So comparing Y to Z, they gain 1 oxygen, the oxidation number actually increases by 2. So P, student P is wrong, or rather student Q is wrong, okay. then we check P. P says that molecule of Y contains lone pair of electrons, so we are comparing these substances. Your nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide all contains lone pair, so P is correct. Seventeen, we have metal reacting with oxygen. So with all this information, we can use again the gas equation to find out the moles of oxygen reacted. PV over RT, Pascal, cubic meter, gas constant and temperature. So from all that, we have 0 0.0122 moles of oxygen involved. And then we need to find out how many moles of your metal will be involved. There are two possible equations. For group 2, we have this equation. For group 1, we have this equation. So, assuming it's group 2, with this number of moles of oxygen, we will have twice the moles of the metal, group 2 metal. If it's group 1, we will have 4 times the moles of the metal. And then how do we know which metals will it be? A bit of trial and error from here. You take 0 0.0245, multiply by mR of the group 2 metals. We take 0 0.049, multiply by the mR of the group 1 metals. And then we see which combination gives us the unused information here. So in this case when we take 
0.049 multiplied by mR of sodium, we get close to 1.15. So the unknown is actually sodium. X chloride added to water, we get acidic solution. Y chloride, we get a neutral solution. So what statement will explain these observations? The combination is we want Y chloride to be neutral. So for a neutral chloride, we are looking at sodium chloride. X chloride is acidic. So we are looking for silicon chloride. So Y is neutral, sodium, X is silicon. Group 1, what happens when we go down the group for the metal radius? Every time we go down the group, we have one more shell being added. So we will expect the radius to be increasing. Twenty sigma bonds versus pi bonds. The sigma bonds in the carbon and hydrogen, you have to be careful to include them also. Okay, they are not drawn out explicitly in the diagram. So, for example, CH three, we actually looks like this: one C with three hydrogen. There are three sigma bonds you have to include also in your calculations. Same for here, CH two. There are two sigma bonds. So, if we add everything up carefully, the blue color ones are the sigma bonds. The red color are the pi bonds. We have 25 sigma and 3 pi bonds. Twenty-one. We have a double bond here, and they are asking which what should R be such that it does not have a cis trans. In other words, for it not to have a cis trans, your R must be the same as this group. So we will end up with two of the same groups connected to the same carbon at the double bond. So your R must also be CH2, CH3. Okay. Then we won't have a cis trans. Twenty-two. The blue color hydrogen atoms I add them in in case you can't see whether they are chiral or not okay so because we have to consider the hydrogen also so once we visualize them we have to check which carbons have four different groups the red asterisk that I put will be the carbons that are connected to four different groups so we have three chiral centers Twenty three. Quite a bit of info. We have a long chain, uh, a long chain hydrocarbon, and then it says it produces two hydrocarbons only, and each one contains the same number of carbons. So, what could the number of carbons be in the beginning? We can eliminate nine carbons straight away, because there's no way of producing two hydrocarbons with the same carbons. Right? They are not. They cannot divide 5, 4, 6, 3 and all that. It won't give us the same number. So it's between 4 carbons, 6 carbons and 8. Which will give us 2 carbons each, 3 carbons each and 4 carbons each. The next info that you have to use is each one has isomers, can contain isomers. If you were to construct your isomers, you realize that you can only construct isomers with a minimum of 4 carbons. You can't do that with two carbons or three carbons. So to have isomers, you must have a minimum of four carbons. So that will mean it comes from a carbon that contains eight in the beginning. Okay. This will not have isomers, three carbons, neither will two carbons. Twenty-four. We change this butene to an acid that also has a ketone, one ketone group. 
So what we can do to here is we, are, we can see that these are two alcohol groups. Eventually, they will become the acid group. But we need to introduce something that will convert to ketone. And how we can do that, we can introduce one alcohol group. Introduce one alcohol group, we will add a H2O. We have to, hydro, we have to hydrate it. Okay. We can't add two alcohol groups, otherwise we'll get two carbonyl groups. We only want one carbonyl group. So we will add steam. This is a hydration. And then we will do our... We'll have this group, three alcohol groups. These two primary alcohols will become the acid. This secondary alcohol will become the ketone. Reaction in the catalytic converter in a car exhaust, the products are non-toxic. So we have carbon monoxide in some options, which we have to eliminate because we want non-toxic gases and then all of them are the same on the right side the difference is we are looking for octane so this is not octane for option B this is octane we want octane which is the alkane so it will be D which free radical is most likely to result from here what we need to compare is the, what bond is actually broken to get us into the options A, B, C, D. So for the first option, we will be breaking, a, we'll be removing an F, a fluorine. Second one, we'll be removing the fluorine. Third one, we'll be removing the chlorine. The fourth one, we are removing hydrogen. Of all this, the C, Cl bond, the chlorine bond is the easiest to be broken based on your bond energy. So C is the one that is most likely to happen. Twenty seven, which one reacts with both ethanol and ethanoic acid? Dichromate doesn't react with the acid, it oxidizes the ethanol. Sodium reacts with both to produce hydrogen gas. Carbonate doesn't react with your ethanol. Sodium hydroxide doesn't react with ethanol. So sodium is the one that reacts with both. Twenty-eight. Hydrogen cyanide with propane. So what is the reaction? We have CN, your nucleophile, undergoing a nucleophilic addition reaction. So it adds on to the partial positive carbon and then later on your hydrogen cyanide will form a new bond with your oxygen and then we get our nucleophilic reaction which is also an addition reaction because one single molecule is formed.